And um, uh, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma is uh, the lung and the liver are the most common sites. And in those locations, there's quite a bit of morbidity and mortality. Many of those patients undergo organ transplant to try to control their disease. It's a very serious disease to have. And a subset of those patients, um, sometimes up to 50%, will eventually die from their disease. Um, a minority of cases, maybe 10% or so, will occur in the skin and the soft tissue. And in that setting, they tend to be much more indolent and well-behaved than for the organ-based um, EHEs. But they may still cause mortality. Um, some of those skin and soft tissue epithelial hemangioendotheliomas will metastasize and kill the patient. And the other thing that's important to note is that the organ-based EHEs can sometimes metastasize to the skin and mimic a primary tumor. So if I ever see EHE in the skin or soft tissue, I usually will point out that, you know, I can't exclude that this could be a metastasis and they need to scan the patient and make sure they don't have internal disease. So here's an example of, uh, it, there's not a specific appearance for this, but this kind of this uh, ill-defined nodule with some surrounding um, erythema um, and maybe lichenification. So they, they don't have a very specific appearance clinically, and most patients don't have any idea that they have this, so it's hard to find good clinical pictures of um, epithelial hemangioendothelioma. And here's microscopically what they look like when they're in the skin. They are a dermal or subcutaneous nodule, and at higher power, the classic feature are epithelioid cells that are arranged in cords and chains or small nests within this kind of myxoid and sclerotic or mucinous and sclerotic background. And when you uh, see the cells, they have these vacuoles in their cytoplasm, and those are referred to as blister cells. And traditionally, these blister cells will often have little uh, red cell fragments within them, and that's because these are actually, the tumor cells are attempting to recapitulate um, vascular lumen formation. So these are abortive lumens forming within the cytoplasm of the tumor cell. It's kind of a similar concept to what you might see in, say, lobular breast cancer, which has those abortive little glandular structures that can have secretion inside them. So those are the classic blister cells of epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. But I will point out, you can have vacuoles in lots of different vascular tumors. Any vascular tumor with plump epithelioid appearing endothelial cells can have the tendency to have vacuole formation. So just, just to point that out, that just because you have a blister cell does not mean for sure that something is an uh, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. And another important note is that these tumors usually do not make well-formed infiltrative vascular channels like angiosarcoma would. And that is, um, that's a useful thing to help uh, distinguish EHE from angiosarc. And uh, that's why these tumors originally, when they were described in the lung, people for a long time thought EHE was an unusual form of carcinoma. And actually, my mentor, Dr. Weiss, was the first person to realize that these were vascular tumors and to name it epithelioid hemangioendothelioma in uh, 1982. So, uh, the, so these can be tricky. They don't necessarily look like a vascular tumor at first glance. And um, they may also express cytokeratin, just like epithelioid angiosarc. So be very careful because it's easy to see a tumor like that in the skin. It's keratin positive. It's easy to think that could be metastatic breast cancer or something like that. Um, and so additional immunostains could really help you there doing some vascular markers would, would solve the problem. And uh, more recently, Brian Rubin at Cleveland Clinic um, and some others have described that there is a translocation in epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, and that's the WWTR1 CAM to 1 translocation, and that's found in the majority of EHEs. And then a small subset will have a different translocation, YAP TFE3. So you can test for these uh, via FISH in difficult cases. I actually have one right now that, that uh, Brian Rubin is, is doing FISH on because I think it's probably an epithelioid angiosarc, but I just want to be sure it's not an unusual malignant epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. Uh, because th there's treatment difference for the patient. So, so that's a useful test in challenging cases to do fish there. 